Hi from Heirloom Books at 6239 North Clark Street in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Jeff Helgeson. In 1855, the uh, same year as the publication of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's highly successful The Song of Hiawatha, six years following the death of Edgar Allan Poe, and ten years after Henry David Thoreau borrowed an axe from Louisa May Alcott's father and ventured into the woods beside Walden Pond, just outside of Concord, Massachusetts. That community's prominent transcendentalist essayist and lecturer, Ralph Waldo Emerson, received an anonymous copy of a 95-page book containing a dozen untitled poems covered in green fabric and bearing a tendal title that seemed rooted in the cloth on which it appeared with an uncaptioned frontispiece presenting the image of a bearded, wavy-haired young man wearing a loose tie, open-collared shirt, and dark jacket. Like William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coldridge's 1800 lyrical ballads, Leaves of Grass begins with a preface suggesting both roots in Romanticism and a budding connection with Transcendentalism, particularly in terms of an address Emerson had given in 1837 seeking a break from the courtly muse of Europe and then an essay Emerson published in 1844 titled American Scholar, expressing the need for the United States to develop its own unique poetic style. Uh, this particular preface to the seemingly anonymous publication announced these messages of great Poets to each man and woman are come to us on equal terms. Only then can you understand us. We are no better than you. What we enclose, you enclose. What we enjoy, you may enjoy. Only on page 29 of the poem itself was the name of the work's author disclosed with the words Walt Whitman, an American, one of the roughs, a cosmos. In response to receipt of this thin, green-bound volume of verse, Mr. Emerson wrote a letter to Whitman once his identity had been confirmed by a newspaper advertisement stating about the book I find it the most extraordinary piece of wit and wisdom that America has yet contributed. And uh, greeting its author at the beginning of a great career, which yet must have had a long foreground somewhere for such a start. Walt Whitman's lengthy foreground began as the uh, son of a carpenter, second of nine children born in Brooklyn, New York on May 31st of 1819. It included attending public school until the age of 12 and then 20 years working as a printer and journalist supporting free soil anti-slavery positions in addition to spending a couple of years as a school teacher as well as traveling overland and by riverboat to New Orleans, where he briefly managed a newspaper, and in at least one personal letter, as stated by Justin Kaplan in Walt Whitman, A Life, during a period of only three months, claims to have fathered six illegitimate children before returning to New York by steamboat up the Mississippi and then across the Great Lakes and down the Hudson River. The volume of 12 untitled poems Emerson received had been printed at its author's expense. The letter with which Emerson responded then being extensively used by Whitman as an advertisement endorsement for the work's second edition the following year. 
Within Whitman's lifetime, nine editions of Leaves of Grass would be published, including a uh, greatly cleaned up version in England edited by Dante Gabriel Rossetti and his sister Christine. By uh, 1900, eight years after Walt Whitman's death on March 26th of 1892, the volume published in Philadelphia by David McKay, including a um, facsimile biography, um, had grown from its original length during 45 years of revision and augmentation to a total of 519 pages. Building on its original dozen verses, Leaves of Grass essentially grew into a freely adapting, self-reflecting autobiography, encompassing travel through the United States, unrestrained sensuality, the American Civil War, Whitman's experience as a wound dresser for the severely injured from both sides of that conflict, a response to the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and then the fact of the poet himself becoming an invalid for several years of his life following a pair of strokes. To um, illustrate through a series of excerpted passages, Walt Whitman wrote within his long evolving poem, I celebrate myself and sing myself and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. I hear America singing the very chorus I hear those of mechanics, each one singing his as it should be, blithe and strong. The carpenter singing his as he measures his plank or beam. The mason singing his as he makes ready for work or leaves off work. The boatman singing what belongs to him in his boat, the deckhand singing on the steamboat deck. The shoemaker singing his as he sits on his bench, the sad hatter singing as he stands, the woodcutter's song, the plowboy's on his way in the morning or at noon intermission or at sundown, the delicious singing of the mother or the young wife at work or the girl sewing or washing, each singing what belongs to him or her and to none else. The day, what belongs to the day. At night, the party of young fellows, robust, friendly, singing with open mouths their strong, melodious song. I am of old and young, of the foolish, as much as the wise, regardless of others, regardful of others, maternal as well as paternal, a child as well as a man, stuffed with the stuff that is coarse and stuffed with the stuff that is fine, a southerner soon as a northerner, of every hue and caste I am I, of every rank and religion, a farmer, mechanic, artist, gentleman, sailor, Quaker, prisoner, fancy man, rowdy, lawyer, physician, priest. With music strong I come with my cornets and my drums. I play not marches for accepted victors only. I play marches for conquered and slain persons. Battles are lost in the same spirit in which they are won. 
I exist as I am. That is enough. I accept time absolutely. It alone is without flaw. I accept reality and dare not question it. Walt Whitman, an American, one of the roughs, a cosmos of Manhattan, the sun, turbulent, fleshy, sensual, eating, drinking, and breeding. No sentimentalist, no stander above men and women or apart from them. No more modest than immodest. I believe in the flesh and the appetites. Seeing, hearing, feeling are miracles, and each part of me is a miracle. I launch all men and women forward with me into the unknown. The clock indicates the moment. But what does eternity indicate? I know I have the best of time and space and was never measured and never will be measured. My left hand hooking you round the waist, my right hand pointing to landscapes of continents and the public road. Not I, not anyone, can travel that road for you. You must travel it for yourself. Let your soul stand cool and composed before a million universes. I hear and behold God in every object, yet understand God not in the least. There is in me, I do not know what it is, but I know it is in me. It is not chaos or death, it is form, union, plan. It is eternal life. It is happiness. The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I, sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick till, rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystic, moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. 1861, armed year, year of the struggle. No dainty rhymes or sentimental verses for you, terrible year, crashing, sad, Distracted year. Beat, beat, drums blow, bugles blow. Make no parley. Stop for no expostulation. Mind not the timid, <coughs> mind not the weeper or prayer. Mind not the old man beseeching the young man. Let not the child's voice be heard, nor the mother's entreaties. Make even the trestles to shake the dead where they lie, awaiting the hearses. <coughs> so strong you trump, O oh, terrible drums, so loud you bugles blow. 
an old man bending. I come among new faces. I dress a wound in the side, deep, deep. I dress a perforated shoulder, the foot with a bullet wound. Cleanse the one with the gnawing and putrid gangrene so sickening, so offensive, while the attendant stands behind the side me, holding the tray and pail. I am faithful. I do not give out the fractured thigh, the knee, the wound in the abdomen. These and more I dress with impassive hand. Yet deep in my breast a fire, a burning flame. Thus in silence in dreams projections returning resuming I tread my way through the hospitals the hurt and wounded I pacify with soothing hand I sit by the restless all night oh, some are so young some suffer so much I recall the experience sweet and sad many a soldier's loving arms about this neck have crossed and rested many a soldier's kiss dwells on these bearded lips when lilacs last in the doorway bloomed and the great star early dropped in the western sky in heaven I mourned and yet shall mourn with ever returning spring. O oh, captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exalting while follow eyes the steady keel the vessel grim and daring but oh heart 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 oh the bleeding drops of red where on the deck my captain lies fallen cold and dead as I sit in twilight laid alone by the flickering oak flame, musing on long past war scenes of countless buried unknown soldiers, of the vacant names as unidentified heirs and seas, the unreturned, the brief truce after battle with grim burial squads and deep filled trenches of gathered dead from all America, north, south, east, west, whence they came up from wooded Maine, New England's farms, from fertile Pennsylvania, Illinois, Ohio, from measureless west, Virginia, the south, the Carolinas, Texas. You million unwrit names all, all you dark bequest from all the war. A special verse for you, your mystic role, entire of unknown names, or north or south, in balms with love in this twilight song. I sing the body electric. Goodbye my fancy. Farewell dear mate. Dear love. I'm going away I know not where. Or
to what fortune or weather I may ever see you again. So goodbye, my fancy. Now, for my last, let me look back a moment. The slower, fainter ticking of the clock is in me. Exit. Nightfall. And soon the heart thud, stopping. Long have we lived, joyed, caressed together, delightful. Now, separation. Goodbye, my fancy. Goodbye. And hail, my fancy. Heirloom Books is located at 6239 North Clark Street in Chicago, Illinois.